Ginny had spent about five minutes searching the common room before the doctor walked in, his head moving from side to side, looking everywhere. Hello, doctor. My and Harry and Ron went looking for you, she told him. Yes, yes, that's nice of them, the doctor replied absently. He was focusing all of his attention on the muffled voice calling out for help. What are you looking for? Ginny asked curiously. The doctor paused to look at her, and then went back to looking around the room. I'm not really sure, but I think I'll know it when I find it, he replied. The voice had become so loud in his head, he was certain it was in this room. He glanced at Ginny again before asking her, You don't happen to hear a woman's voice calling out for help in your head, do you? Sorry, doctor, no voices in my head, Ginny replied. Not sure what to think of the doctor, she went back to searching the room herself. If you come across an old watch, let me know. Teeves stole it from me, and I think he hid it somewhere around here, she relayed to the doctor. Out of the corner of her eye, she saw the doctor had gone eerily still. She turned her head and saw he was staring at her, shock written all over his face. What did you say you were missing? The doctor managed to whisper, his throat suddenly gone dry. Ginny caught a flash of reflected light coming from an end table behind the doctor. He turned to watch her as she ran past him. The doctor found it hard to breathe when Ginny picked up an ordinary-looking, if somewhat tarnished, pocket watch. Even from halfway across the room, he could see the words etched in high Frayne on the cover. Open me when ready. Found it! Ginny squealed happily. She turned around and saw the doctor was still staring at her in wonder. Is everything all right, doctor? She inquired. I don't know. I really don't, he replied, his voice barely above a whisper. Is that your watch? He asked, desperately wanting to know the answer. Why? Ginny answered suspiciously. Have you opened it? The doctor asked carefully. Ginny shook her head and then paused. I can't. It's broken. I think. She replied, not certain of her answer. She couldn't actually remember ever trying to open it. Open it, the doctor whispered. Ginny rolled her eyes at the doctor and pressed the stud on the side that opened the top cover, figuring the thing would refuse to open. To her surprise, the cover snapped open and she was instantly bathed in a brilliant gold light. Tendrils of vortex energy sprang out of the watch and swirled about her head. Ginny instinctively closed her eyes and allowed herself to become whole again. Soon the light faded and the vortex tendrils were absorbed into her body. She opened her eyes and looked at the doctor, her ability to see into other dimensions restored. That sight allowed her species to recognize others of their own kind, even after they had regenerated. She grinned at the doctor and repeated the first two words she had ever spoken to him. Hello, Dad, she said. The doctor fell to his knees sobbing. I didn't know. If I had known, I would have stayed on Messling as long as it took, he swore to her, guilt overtaking him. Jenny rushed forward and dropped to her knees as well. She wrapped her father in her arms and buried her head in his chest. I know, Dad, I've missed you too, she laughed between her own tears of joy. The doctor kissed her forehead, tears flowing. Jenny, my Jenny, he managed to choke out. Actually... If it's all the same to you, Dad, I would prefer Ginny, Ginny told him. Ginnerva sounds a whole lot nicer than generated anomaly, she choked. I don't care what I get to call you as long as you're back, the doctor laughed and kissed the top of her head before pulling her into a tighter hug, never wanting to let his daughter out of his sight again. Harry, Ron, and Hermione had scoured the seventh and eighth floors looking for the doctor without any success. There's got to be a better way of doing this, Ron complained. You know, like using the Marauder's Map, he said sarcastically. I didn't know I'd be needing it tonight, Harry snapped back. Hermione sighed and grabbed both young men by the arms. Knock it off, you two, she warned them. Bickering won't help us, but Ron's right for once. We have been going about this the wrong way, she told them. Thanks, I think, Ron replied. What are you thinking, he inquired. What's really slowing us down are things like walls and floors, Hermione told them. She saw the blank looks on their faces. We need to ask someone who doesn't have those limitations, she explained. Ron and Harry looked at each other and shrugged. Oh, for crying out loud, we need to talk with a ghost, she sighed. Why didn't you just say that in the first place, Ron wondered. Hermione rolled her eyes and Harry stifled a laugh. 
Sir Nicholas, we need you, she called out loudly. The translucent image of the Gryffindor house ghost rose slowly out of the floor in front of them. Hello, you three, he said cheerily. Sir Nicholas, we're looking for the doctor, Harry told him. Have you seen him around? he wondered. You mean that odd man with the bow tie? Sir Nicholas asked for clarification. That's him. He also has a funny-looking chin, Ryan interjected. Ouch! he yelped when Hermione kicked him in the leg. I used to know another man who called himself the doctor. Completely different person, of course. The man I knew had frizzy hair and an impossibly long scarf. Also, I knew him back when I was alive. I wonder if it's some sort of secret brotherhood, the old ghost babbled. Hermione shook her head in dismay. Sir Nicholas, please, have you seen the current doctor recently? She asked, hoping to get him back on track. Oh, yes, that doctor. I ran into him near the fat lady. He was very polite, so I helped him get into your dorm. He seemed to think that whatever he was looking for would be found somewhere in there, Sir Nicholas replied. Harry and Ron couldn't help themselves. They started laughing at the absurdity of things. Hermione ground her teeth and muttered, I'm going to kill him. The three Gryffindors thanked Sir Nicholas and ran back down to their dorm. When they opened the fat lady's portrait, they had to cover their eyes as a golden light flooded through the doorway. As soon as their eyes readjusted, they ran to the common room to see what had caused it. They froze in the entryway when they saw the scene before them. The doctor and Ginny in a tight embrace while he kissed the top of her head. Harry was the first one to react. He stormed past the pair in the center of the room on his way to the stairs. He didn't say a word, but the look of betrayal on his face told Ginny all she needed to know. Hermione wasn't as passive. She picked up a book left on the couch closest to the door and threw it at the doctor. The doctor saw the literary projectile in time and managed to turn so it hit his shoulder rather than his head. I hate you! Hermione screamed before running out into the castle. Ron looked from where Harry had gone back to the open door where Hermione had left in tears. He slowly turned to look at Ginny and wagged a finger at her. I am so telling Mum on you, he promised. Ginny looked at the doctor and gave him a small smile. That's my dad. Never a dull moment, she teased. <laughs>